Well, hello, hello, my good friends. Welcome back once again to the RimWorld Gun Empire series. As you can see, we're currently guarding our precious cargo with our near and dear lives. Precious cargo, of course, that I still haven't decided whether I'd like to drop it on somebody's head, sell it to somebody, and see if they'll fire it off at the nearest enemy settlement, or I don't know what we're gonna do with it, maybe just leave it in the vault, who knows? I suppose, though, in the meantime, while we're deciding what to do with our brand new nuke, we should at least research artillery guns, that way we have a large enough cannon that we'll be able to fire it at settlements if we decide to use it in such a way. Now, of course, we could fire it out of a mortar, but mortars are are very inaccurate and that wouldn't be all that spectacular now would it something that would be a bit spectacular though is improving the defenses of our pill box once more we have a comment here by our good friend yura kabako i believe is how you pronounce your name uh who was actually saying that we should sandwich our embrasures in between actual walls and that's a really good idea i don't know why i didn't think to do that in the first place so i apologize and thank you for reminding me essentially when you sandwich the embrasures between walls this does allow pawns to also take cover behind the walls, giving them a less likely chance of getting shot in the head. Or shot in general, really. Here, let me show you a demonstration. As you can see here, Min is firing through the embrasure from behind a turret, and then once completed, she can run behind the wall. Simple as that. We had some martial soldiers visiting, but I wasn't very concerned with them as we actually had a quest that popped up called Vagabonds Desire Alms. So essentially, there were a bunch of vagabonds or refugees or whatever, and they were requesting silver. It was apparently so they could buy back a friend who was recently kidnapped. Oh, <laughs> I have a feeling that Big Daddy and his outlander men have something to do with this. These poor sheeple must not know that their friend is most likely already digging in Big Daddy's mines enslaved. And these sheep also don't know that they just just waltzed right into the lion's den. You see, they don't belong to any faction, so we're not going to upset anyone if we kidnap them, and we need more mercenaries. We immediately rushed in, attempting to try and arrest several of them, including the children, but I only wanted to arrest the children to keep them out of harm's way, and look what's happened. Unfortunately, we had to slaughter them. It was our only choice. Our hands were tied. There was literally nothing we could do to prevent this child's death. I mean, for God's sakes, he even pulled a knife out out on a beco. I mean, he had to kill him. We refuse to feel guilty for self-defense, okay? The only thing that I felt now as the rain was pouring down from the sky upon these carcasses was regret. The regret that we hadn't arrested more of them, damn it. We had only managed to arrest one of them. The rest of them got killed. Speaking of which, we had a bit of good news and bad news with the one person that we did manage to arrest. The good news was she had a decent skill set. Pretty good at crafting, mining, uh, burning passion and shooting, yada yada. The bad part was she was unwaveringly loyal to her home faction, so we had to enslave her. Not that big of a deal, but I wanted a merc, not a slave. A bit of time later, I realized that we had a lot of food in storage, even with our growing population, I think that we could sustain making some better meals for our people, which will increase their moods, of course. So I've actually decided to plan out making some fine vegetarian meals for everyone, as vegetables was our primary food source. Nino got right on that for us, and the way I had it planned out, I was going to do about half as simple meals and half as these fine meals, just to kind of start us out. And as you can see here with Otto, they were immediately a huge hit with all of the mercenaries, giving them who ate it a plus five mood buff. It was nothing to write home to mama about, but it was okay. Then I noticed as we had been preparing all of these fine meals, we had enslaved Harriet, the beggar that I was just showing you literally moments ago, so it didn't take us very long to get her to join us at all. Later on into the night, I decided that I actually wanted to make some more improvements on our defenses, and specifically within our pillbox. I apologize, I know I keep coming back to the pillbox and working on it and making improvements, but I just keep thinking of new things that I would like to to add, such as this steel barricade that we can actually take cover behind when in gunfights. I also ended up building some flooring to ensure that we can move through here properly as well. I would also end up doing much of the same in the hallway that connects the pillbox to the rest of the base here with the steel barricade and some sandbags. That way we could try to take cover if for some reason enemies were to break through. We need this buffer point to kind of be militarized. Then I suppose everyone was just so plumb dumb tickled about all 
all the defense improvements and everything that we've been doing, they decided to throw a little bit of a party and just kind of celebrate a little bit. Doesn't look like they invited any of the slaves, a mercenary only party I see. A bit later, Downs finally finished up her elongated, extensive research of artillery guns, and once that was completed, we finally could sack that old, dusty-ass mortar and begin building two brand new, shiny, wonderful artillery cannons. Oh yeah, I bet these two bad boys could fire a nuclear bomb, if need be, of course, I still haven't made up my mind. However, I would like to test out this new artillery cannon technology and see just how wonderful it is, especially compared to the mortars. We need to know if it's even worth using, and I know just the place to take it. You see, not too far from the base, we actually have an ancient complex, of course. Now, for a long time, I haven't thought much of it, but I have a sneaking suspicion that the Mountain Devil Mafia might be using it as a temporary base of operations in our area. Given that their bases are normally in the Outlands, and we've been seeing a lot of raids from them recently, it would only make sense that this place is most likely under their control, and after we arrived, it would appear that my sneaking suspicion was correct. Now, I didn't see any of the Mafia Devils outside, but something tells me that this vehicle assembly bay that appears to be refurbishing old martial tech might just be theirs. Not only does this temporary base explain the fluctuation in raids that we've been getting from them, but this vehicle assembly bay also explains why we keep seeing a lot of these vehicles attacking us as well. I wasn't sure if they were alerted to our presence or what, but I couldn't find any of them outside. My best guess is they're all inside working on something or hiding. Truth be told, I didn't really give a shit what they were doing inside either way. I planned on giving them a very big knock on the door, assuming that our new artillery cannon are accurate, as described, of course. I would let Nurzak and Abiko have the fun here with the artillery cannons, loading them up, but for the time being, I'm gonna have them hold fire until we can get the armadillo into position. Because as soon as we start firing, I have a feeling that that tank is going to come out and try to rock our socks just a little bit for us. While trying to move the armadillo into position there, you may have noticed that the tank somewhat locked onto us and that scared the shit out of me because as we've seen in previous battles with the marshals and the rebels, those things are very powerful. I was unsure why it didn't start trying to chase us down though, maybe it's not fully completed. Regardless, we started firing some mortar shells at the base, hitting one of the sections of it where apparently there were no devils either. And we would continue this process, rinse and repeat, up until the point that we finally found them all hiding in the center with yet another tank. How the hell did they even get that inside? Dear God. Well, now that we found out they have two tanks, I would get the armadillo the hell away from there. We might have been able to handle one of them, but not two of them. Those things are going to destroy the armadillo and anything else that they fire at, most likely. So, we need to get away from them and just try to, I don't know, take pot shots at them, maybe? That was my decision. Essentially, whenever the tanks would go back towards the base because they have such a massive range, we would then run in back to our artillery cannons and start firing again. For whatever reason, the Mountain Devils and their tanks did not want to leave the base. Which, I thought at first, was a very good strategic tactic on their part, up until I realized that I could just bring the armadillo around, blow a massive hole into the side of this ancient complex, and start firing at them from the inside but we ended up running out of ammo, so I would have to bring the Sand Viper around and try to refuel the Armadillo. Thankfully, as I was attempting to do this, Richard in the Rifle Runner and the other mercenaries firing the artillery shells had managed to keep the tanks and the Mountain Devils busy and occupied as Shinichi had transferred over the steel into the Armadillo, finally reloading its massive cannon. As we were preparing the Armadillo for another bombardment, though, the tanks were getting extremely close to hitting Abiko and Nurzak with its massive cannon, they had to take cover behind some small rock cliffs trying to avoid it. Uh, to be honest, this would have been easier to do if I wouldn't have tried to have taken pot shots at it every so often, but luckily no one ended up getting hit by the cannon here. And now the armadillo was finally ready. We had broken through the steel walls of this structure into the nougaty soft center where all of their little people were hiding, and we began firing our massive shells inside, killing several of them, and after this they began trying to flee. Of course, we weren't going to just let 
let them leave though, no, no, no. We were going to run them over. As they were attempting to run away, we would do our absolute best to send as many of them to hell as humanly possible. And luckily, we did manage to kill several of their foot soldiers, but unfortunately, there was no chance that we were going to be able to stop these tanks from leaving the area. If we came out where the tanks could see us, where we could fire at them, that meant we were within range of them as well, and they definitely would have killed us. But we did end up defeating the base as a whole, and we managed to kill several of their soldiers, so of course that was something to be proud of. And with this base finally destroyed and or captured, that does mean that we should see a lot less frequent raids as well as less frequent vehicles being in those raids in general when they do come. I still can't figure out though why we couldn't get them to leave the base as we were literally raining down mortar shells upon their heads. Maybe their chain of command told them that they needed to stay here and protect their uh, generators or something at all cost, or maybe all their equipment to build vehicles. I really don't know. It is possible maybe they had called for backup. It looked like we were expecting a raid in the game UI, so maybe that's what it was. Regardless of the reason though, I am now going to be referring to this battle as Operation Steel Turn. Yes, well, not exactly the most catchy or interesting name, but it was the best that I could do. I'm sorry. In the meantime, we would actually begin deconstructing the vehicle assembly bay, the generators, and basically anything of use that would give us steel and or components that the mountain devils were using here. Even though now we can make most of these resources on our own back home, it was pretty well free to just take these, so we might as well. After that was finally completed, though, we would begin making the journey all the way back home away from the ancient structure. However, I ended up receiving a notification that our caravan had been detected, and I thought that was kind of weird, and then I realized that the icon for the ancient uh, structure hadn't gone away, so I was like, what's going on here? Well, it actually turns out that I left Otto alone in the armadillo in the ancient structure. A classic rat night whoopsie. Ah, no big deal though, he only sat alone isolated in the tank in the night cold air for several hours. I'm sure he's fine. Anyhow, we made it back home some time later with all the resources, weapons, and everything that we had collected. And along with all the resources and weapons, we also brought back a mountain devil impid who we would now begin recruiting into the ranks of our mercenaries. I'm sure he'll make a wonderful addition. Now that we've got everything situated though and everyone is back home, we're going to begin hauling all of these weapons and resources into their proper places in the storage rooms. Just as well, we also have a Biko here who is making some pre-charged mini turrets, that way we can make another stockpile to sell to the rebels and or marshals. Or perhaps these handsome young slavers who arrived later into the night would like to purchase some off of us, maybe in exchange for some of their strapping workers. No, but in all seriousness though, I had Scott begin discussing with the leader of this slave caravan because we did want to purchase some of their slaves. Not to keep as slaves though, we actually wanted to break their chains and make them into mercenaries. The only issue was though, unfortunately, all of the slaves that they had that we could purchase would have to join as slaves. Nevertheless though, we did end up purchasing all three of them and now we have Mathis, Jet, and Bowman in the SNR Rifle Company. All three of them ended up costing a good bit of silver. We didn't really get to sell any weapons or anything to the slaver, unfortunately, but we did end up selling Harriet, the vagabond that we had enslaved early on in the video. You know, the one we don't care about. Of course, though, as I've mentioned early on in the video, I do want to have more and more mercenaries. I want to form a little army this episode, right? And I want these three to be part of that army, and it would be as simple as just throwing them into a cell and beginning to recruit them, of course, but I feel like that's a bit too easy, and they've mostly likely been slaves for years, so how are we supposed to know if they would even make decent mercenaries? Well, the obvious answer to that question, my friends, is by testing them. Yes, indeed, I have actually armed these three slaves. I know, crazy, aren't I? But we're actually going to take them out somewhere and just give them a little testy test. We would end up taking them out to a faction contention, which is basically where a small camp or so of one faction is being attacked by another, just to see if they could kill some of them, and you know, if they survive, they've earned their spot among our mercenaries, and if they die, well, they're dead, of course. And some of you may think that this is unfair, but honestly, I mean, most of our members that are among the mercenaries, if not all of them, have earned their spot in some type of combat role before. They have some type of experience, at the very least. So these new folks need to 
to prove their worth as well. We ended up arriving some time later. It appeared to be a small Thromboian Union camp. It would appear that the other faction that was having the contention with these tribes people were the rebels, and somehow I don't think these couple of rebels here are going to be standing side by side with us during this battle, unfortunately. That shouldn't be a problem though, as I have the utmost faith in our new recruits and their ability to slaughter these tribes people. And if they can't, we could always just hop back into the truck and then leave them stranded here to die, of course. The Thromboians were pretty quick, one of them almost took Mathis down, but luckily with the help of the others we managed to kill them before they stabbed her through the chest. And then we would take on the rest of their little village here, as they were kind of scattered about, we began firing at them as much as we could of course, trying to scatter ourselves, that way either we're not kind of in a group, getting shot at by their bows, and yada yada. At one point though, they were getting a little bit too close for comfort, thankfully Min used her impid fire breath on them, causing them to begin running around in circles while inflamed. However, that didn't last for too long, and then they would once again commence trying to beat us down with their horns and their swords and their hammers and so on and so forth. Of course, we started just blasting them into oblivion. Eventually, we finally killed the last remaining Thromboian. After putting a bullet in the last sad sack of shit that was coming at us though, we had finally cleared the entire camp and it was time for us to begin tending to our wounded. After that of course, we would also begin tending to some of the warriors that were lying on the ground very wounded as we planned on taking them prisoner as well. After that, we would then begin making preparations to travel all the way back home around the mountains here. The only issue was this was going to take a bit longer than it normally would as we had so many people that were walking, we couldn't fit them all into the truck and a lot of these people were injured, which of course made them much slower. But our victory during that battle has shown us that our three new recruits have truly earned a spot among our greatest of warriors, and because of this, that does mean that they're going to need their own bedrooms once we actually get them recruited, of course. So while we are waiting on them to return home, we would actually begin working to significantly increase the residential capacity of our base as it currently stands. The caravan finally ended up returning home that night with our Thromboian prisoners immediately trying to make a break for it out of the territory. Oh, a nice attempt, I'll admit, but extremely futile. Our comrades were quite cooperative with the recruitment process. They would even go into the armory to drop off their weapons and armor before heading down to the prison for their temporary rehoming. We had Otto, Nurzak, and Fox arrest all three of them and just kind of put them in their beds in their cells, and they didn't fight, you know, they were like I said, completely cooperative, very kind of them. There was one teeny tiny issue though. Unfortunately, you see, I had neglected to even check if these three could be recruited, if they were recruitable, and two of them were, but our friend Bowman here actually had unwavering loyalty to the Outlanders for some reason. Ah, good lord, it's almost as if they've brainwashed him. Wait a minute, brainwashed? That gives me an idea. Introducing the newest mod to our mod list, Uncle Boris's Brainwash Chair. We would end up having to research basic electronics to unlock the brainwashing chair, and just as well a tube television, which to the best of my understanding is also required to be able to brainwash a colonist and or pawn. Based on my testing with this mod, I've never used it before up until this point, but it looks like you can actually brainwash them into having a passion or burning passion for certain skills, new traits, all kinds of different stuff, but I was afraid that that would definitely be a little bit cheaty, so I ended up just going with a standard recruitment brainwashing to try and actually get them to join us. It already felt sleazy enough that I would be able to recruit an unwaveringly loyal pawn, so, you know, I mean, I was out of options though, this was the only way. It was going to take Downs a little bit of time to actually complete the research required for that though, so in the meantime, I decided I was sick and damn tired of watching Scott limp up and down the hallways with his old frail back. So since we still have a good bit of resources, I decided I would try my hand once more at creating yet another bionic spine and we would try to install it on Scott. And if this time around it doesn't work, I don't know, we're gonna have to just keep him home all the time and choose somebody else to go out and do trading because he can barely move. Once he had finally created the bionic spine, Richard would then begin performing hours upon hours of agonizing surgery on Scott, and in the end the surgery was actually successful. Finally, the bionic spine was installed. This was going to be a big help. If I'm not mistaken, this should increase his moving speed to 70%. Not great, of course, but it's better than it was. 
About a day to two days later, we had finally finished up our research into basic electronics, which did end up making it possible for us to build the brainwashing chair, so we actually began mining out a small section next to our recreation room, ironically, for a brainwashing room where we would then build the chair, some very low-level lighting, and a tube television. We had two prisoners currently that were unwaveringly loyal and needed brainwashed, but of course we decided that uh, Bowman here would be our guinea pig, as it were. Were. We would bring him into the depressingly dimly lit room, strap him into the brainwashing chair, and then flip on a little movie for him to watch for hours on end until his brain rotted away. Personally, I think the movie they're forcing him to watch is actually a film montage of me saying the words extremely and whatnot and unfortunately. That's enough to drive anyone crazy. But I am curious, what do you guys think the brainwashing video would be or what would it look like in that kind of stuff? Be sure to let me know in the comments section down below. After a while of watching the video, eventually Bowman ended up hitting the ground, collapsing, he could watch no more, so we took him all the way back to his cell. Turns out he had a catatonic breakdown from the video. Based on what I could tell with the mod, this is what is supposed to happen, and then once he recovers from the catatonic breakdown in a few days, we'll be able to determine if it actually made him recruitable. Next up on the chopping block would be the Thrombolian prisoner known as Silva. She too, of course, would be subject to the brain-rotting mind mind-melting video that was in this room in hopes that we would achieve her allegiance. A bit of time later, and all of this recruiting and brainwashing was really making everyone famished, and they decided that they needed more food. Quite literally, they needed a place to grow more food, so we began working on yet another kind of hydroponics area under the mountain here. This was basically just more of the same. You guys have already seen me create three of these already. There was nothing new. The only thing worth noting is to the southern section of this room, we ended up having to build a massive retaining wall, simply because we had ended up digging to the outside of the mountain when trying to build this one. Then for a time, I just kind of sat back and watched as all of our wardens would begin chipping away at the recruitment of the six prisoners, and this would take a very, very, very long time, unfortunately, but I was determined to get them all on board as mercenaries. No matter how many times I had to brainwash them or feed them fine meals and sit there and watch them go it down as we were already struggling to plant more crops, I would get these sons of bitches to join us. Speaking of which, Bowman was actually becoming quite a hard nut to crack. He would end up needing a double dose of the brainwashing. Although this second time around, it did seem to finally do the trick. Shocking to no one, the last three that would need to be recruited were the three that we had actually purchased and that proved themselves on the battlefield. I do suppose it does make sense that they would be the strongest physically and also mentally, of course, but in the end, they all ended up joining us. By the time that the snow was falling upon the ground, we had six new mercenaries. Ah yes, finally all of our hard work, our blood, sweat, and tears have paid off. Now, I'm sure by now you've probably noticed that they're not near as organized as our other mercenaries, unfortunately. I didn't have enough time to build them all the light combat armor or really any other type of armor except for a few of the black helmets, of course. So most of them are wearing the metal armor and just picked up a few weapons we had in storage. By this point, we actually have 13 mercenaries total. Of course, not counting Scott or Richard. I don't really count them as mercenaries as they're basically just the leaders of the the SNR Rifle Company, of course, you know, they're not actually part of the private army. I know this isn't an actual army, of course, but it is a start. It does also look like we're about to get our money's worth and get to test out our new soldiers here on the battlefield because we have a raid from the Mountain Devil Mafia. Not only a raid, but apparently these raiders plan on making their way through our base. Oh, we'd love to see them try. I will admit, though, that they are very well equipped, with a lot of them actually sporting some pretty heavy weaponry as well as explosive weaponry. This left me a bit curious as to why this raid was really packing a punch, and I believe I see it now. Along with them, they have a duke. This here, my friends, is Devil Duke Commando. His title is Devil Duke among the Mafia, of course, and his name is Commando, just to kind of specify. You could kind of think of him as the manager of this local branch of the Mountain Devil Mafia. This is the handsome devil, no pun intended, that we have to thank for all the raids ever since we've settled here. We'll be sure to show him our appreciation. As they approached, the majority of our mercenary forces quickly ran into the pillbox for 
cover to begin annihilating these bastards with their massive auto cannons. This is it. There's no going back now. Just as we had assumed, they were pretty starstruck from the get-go with our sandstone turret that was hidden within these rocks. Looks like they're having a pretty hard time with it, but Duke Commando here didn't care and he went straight for the peel box, firing at our mercenaries. We returned with very heavy fire from our cannons, annihilating the Duke. He was just the first though, next up would be the rest of his filthy mountain devils. They were still pretty preoccupied with our turret up until the point that they actually ended up destroying it and then they would get closer to our defenses fighting our other turrets. I tried to think of a good strategy here and I had the idea that I would actually get all of our mercenaries into the garage here and then crack the door open as soon as possible to try and flank them. And for the most part this strategy seemed to be extremely successful. I was going to bring our soldiers completely out to just start firing at them while they had their backs turned, but they actually began coming back towards us and also began fleeing, so we would try to take cover behind some of the walls that we had built in the garage while still firing at those remaining few. Once it seemed a little bit safer to come out, as many of them were scattered, we would actually begin giving chase to the handful of devils that were still in the area trying to run away, killing several of them. Unfortunately though, we wouldn't be able to chase them all down before some of them ended up getting away, but it wouldn't hurt to let a couple survive, maybe they can go back to the higher ups in the Mountain Devil Mafia and tell them what happened here today. Believe it or not, a few of these sorry ass impids actually managed to survive the onslaught of bullets that was provided by our massive auto cannons and by our turrets. We would actually end up taking two of them back to the prison where we would begin tending to their wounds, that way we could actually start recruiting them into our private army here. I know I've said it a lot, I've been yapping about it a lot in this episode. Episode, and it'll all make sense here in just a moment, I do believe, but I am really trying to build up this army as much as possible. Speaking of armies though, I'm gonna say that the Mountain Devil Mafia's chapter in our area here is probably lacking in soldiers and equipment now. I didn't see one vehicle during that entire raid, so I'm thinking our little attack earlier on in the video must have done some good. On top of that, with their Duke murdered here today on the battlefield, they're gonna be lacking leadership and and guidance in this chapter and probably scrambling to try and find another duke. You know, those few remaining members that are still around here. I'm beginning to think that the Mountain Devil Mafia is actually becoming a big problem for the entire planet. As you can see here, we actually have an icon on the map for a safe house for the Mountain Devils, and it looks like this is linked to a quest from some faction in the Outlands. They've apparently placed a bounty of 86 gold on the head of one of these devils that may be something that we look into in the beginning of next episode. I wouldn't mind making a little bit of gold. But like I was saying, I think that the planet may be getting a little bit sick of this disgusting mafia here, as the Outlands themselves are just full of criminals and scavengers, slavers. We've seen many horrific types of people come from the Outlands, so you know it must be bad when even they are trying to put a bounty on some of their heads. You know, we have a private army though, probably one that could rival the Mountain Devils as we've seen. Maybe we end up taking them down, right? Okay, I'm being a little bit cheeky. Here's the thing. A lot of people have been saying, you know, what's your end goal for the series? I've seen a few comments here and there, of course, and I don't really have a good answer, or at least I didn't, but I think I might now, and I want some feedback on this. I'd love to know what you guys think, if this is a good idea, maybe I should do something else, but this is kind of, uh, kind of what I'm thinking the end goal will be. What if we conquer the Mountain Devil Mafia? Using the Empire's mod, I've never used it before, but I have seen it in use before. I believe we could use that to conquer Mountain Devil Mafia settlements and we could actually take those for ourselves, like genuinely take them for ourselves where they pay a tax to us um, every so often. They actually will pay us in silver. I believe we would have to send some of our people there to stay indefinitely, which I would be completely fine with. That would be an even better reason to build our army. And also that is the reason that this episode I have tried to focus so heavily on recruiting more people into our mercenary ranks. Of course, I mean, with that being said, I've wanted to build up the private army a lot in general because something I would like to do is when we 
get the quest uh, like a uh, muscle for hire or whatever they're called where uh, we can actually loan out some of our people to other factions I thought that that would be uh, something we would like to do originally I didn't want to do that because I thought it could show favoritism to one faction or another and it really wouldn't because they would simply be paying us right but it could cause other factions to be upset with us yada yada but I think after we get a large enough army where we are a force to be reckoned with where these other factions might not really be all that interested in trying to take us down specifically we could do things like that we would have leverage I mean hell we already have a nuclear bomb they're just not aware of it yet of course so we do have a lot of leverage but I think that that is going to be my my end goal for the series if you guys have any ideas what you would like to see the end goal for the series be be sure to let me know of course in the comment section down below but I am thinking that maybe we conquer the mountain devil mafia we you know just basically eradicate them from the planet we wouldn't necessarily take their place as a mafia because we're you know we're a private army it's a little bit different right uh, but uh, yeah we would just conquer them uh, and use the Empire's mod to actually make those settlements ours and get taxes uh, let me know what you guys think, though. I love you ever so much. Thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I will see you next time. Goodbye.